ಹೊಟ್ಟೆ ಮತ್ತು ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಶೇರ್ ಪಾಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಇರ್ಕ ಅಪ್ಡೇಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರ್ಲಾ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರ್ಲಾ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ನ್ಯೂ ಕ್ರಿಮಿನಲ್ ಲಾ and this is a sequence of series continuing yesterday's discussion yesterday we had the introduction and uh, we expanded the thinking on the understanding of the criminal justice system in india in today's uh, session i'll try to highlight in specific about what are the changes that has happened from the section perspective itself each section wise what are the changes which could be some of the questions in your competitive examinations whether it is upsc or tnpsc whatever it is my dear friends uh, we are uh, discussing about the crim- new criminal law where article 21 of the constitution of india is affected there are uh, two systems of law prevailing uh, in the country you must be aware that whenever there is a land dispute uh, people go to the court and then they file a case in the court that comes under the civil nature not really all land matters are civil nature in fact uh, land grabbing and uh, fraudulent transaction on a land ideally will come under a uh, criminal law even registration act 1908 provides for the same under section 83 of the act to say where there are lands which are registered using false document whether bona fide or malafide many of them here writing tnpsc examinations who are supposed to be aiming for sro sub register office you should know section 83 where you are a registrar and you receive some documents and those documents you are not aware whether it is a false document or a uh, bona fide uh, bona fide documents but still you went on to register in future under 83 same other registrar or the same registrar can cancel the registration registration does not provide finality of a transaction registration is for the purpose of giving a permission to a transaction of land registration my dear friends when i spoke about it why did i highlight about it you have an implication of criminal law in each and every administration administrative role fundamentally civil law procedures are not fatal if you miss on certain things in civil law it is not fatal take for example when you go to the court when it's a civil case people are not that uh, 
specific uh, certain times uh, people miss out the dates they take adjournment and export a orders are filed uh, export a orders are pronounced and then subsequently you go on again uh, go and say that these are the reasons i didn't come to the court please commence the proceeding again so this is the civil nature but criminal law as such is very specific about the procedure and what is fundamentally affected i just yesterday spoke uh, I gave an highlight to say from 1st July 2024 onwards, the relationship of a citizen with the state has changed. When I say relationship of a citizen with the state, what it primarily means, what article of the Constitution of India is affected, I didn't talk about it yesterday, but I'm talking today. I'm going to go into the details of the Constitution of India. It is affecting Article 21 of the Constitution of India. You being an administrator who are uh, looking at to become uh, part of the government or the state, you must get to an understanding of the holistic picture of the constitution of India. Whether you are a legislator or you are getting into the executive, anyway, judiciary, you must know constitution, but many people who practice in the uh, uh, organ of judiciary also many people are not aware of the constitutional provisions but it is essential to know the constitutional provisions article 21 is first of all affected because of the new criminal law what is article 21 all about yeah personal liberty the article 21 just not about the personal liberty it is one of the element of the article but it is about protection of life and liberty. It is not life or liberty. It is and. My dear friends, when you are interpreting law, and makes a difference, or makes a difference, shall makes a difference, may makes a difference, should makes a difference, notwithstanding makes a difference, subject to makes a difference. And these are all to be known by all of you. And here in Article 21, it says, no person shall be deprived of his life. No person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except, except, except according to procedure established by law. According to procedure established by law. My dear friends, uh, when I talk about the procedure, what procedure should accept as is accept according to the procedure established by law? So, if you are curtailing the personal uh, life and personal liberty of somebody, that means there should be a procedure for it. If there is no procedure, then you have no right to curtail the life and liberty of a person. It's very clear, person. Under, I'm not getting into details of it because each article, I have a material to discuss at least for two to three hours to four hours, five hours. Even article 21, I can discuss as a series for one week. Only article 21. But here, I'm not here. I'm just trying to give highlights about it. And two days is not sufficient to understand the criminal, new criminal law. First of all, you should, uh, before understanding new criminal law, you should know what was the old criminal law. So how many of them will know about it? But everybody should know about it. That's the point. Because you are affected on a day-to-day -day basis. Can you imagine, in Anna Nagar, uh, you go for eating uh, foods across. And one of the happening places in Chennai for food. Of course, of course, for education. You go to uh, street vendors and have food. Can you imagine on 1st July in 2024, the first case in this country was not on the rich person. But it is on the street vendor, filed by the Delhi police. It will come in the history. When a law is provided into the hands of the law enforcement agency, you see what is the first step they have done. Because after 100 years, if this law is going to be there, they are not going to amend or change this criminal law again and again. Because already the old law we have to carry to the court until the last case in the country gets disposed of. I don't know how many years it will take. 
and then you are now carrying a new law also if you are again going to change change the law in between somewhere 40 years down the line or 30 years down the line what will happen third set of laws i have to take in my hand so i hope you can understand the importance of the criminal justice system so article 21 is squarely affected if i am curtailing life and li personal liberty it can only by the procedure established by law this is the constitution of india but that means when the people part of the legislative when you are when they were asked why this new law was brought what was their answer we are removing the colonial baggage let us first do a checkpoint when you are a student when you are aiming to be in the government and not in of any of the political party that should be your lowest choice in your life then you must always analyze things from the neutral level even if you are affected even if you are affected can there be a statement than this to say how important to remain neutral even if you are affected when people come and say reservation should be removed even i may be affected by reservation but i'll always stand for reservation but that is not you should understand from the larger perspective larger perspective of the country so why i'm giving this example now this uh, article 21 getting affected by the procedure established by law in criminal justice system there was nothing colonial there is nothing colonial you go and ask the legislator today representing the union government was part of the union government first thing they will say we removed the colonial system of criminal justice system what is where is colonial my friends of law will know we had criminal procedure code 1973 1973 we were which system we were which system we are india after 1950 we had constitution criminal procedure code came in 1973 where is the question of colonial rule or colonial system that came as a baggage i already spoke about doctrine of eclipse yesterday where whatever was in contravention to the constitution was uh, removed because of the do operation of doctrine of e eclipse which is part of the constitution of india here a statement comes from the uh, legislators where they conveniently say that we removed the colonial and we have to believe so that's why i'm saying don't be in the right don't be in the left be at the neutral level to understand things as it is you are getting educated you have to evolve don't go to a political system even when you become an administrator it is very important it is very difficult but it is very important you stand on the neutrality being a lawyer certain policy i may appreciate of the government at the same time we should also give comments and criticize the systems because we should always stand in the court for, for what is not appropriate as per the constitution of india we have to keep checking what is constitutional and non constitutional unconstitutional there is always a presumption that when you bring a law everything is everything is constitutional as of now you see that bn that is bharatiya nyaya 2023 bharatiya nagrik suraksha sanita 2023 that is criminal procedure court bharatiya sakshya adhiniyam 2023 as of now you feel that this is constitutional wait and watch in another one year there will be multiple writ petition the high courts and the supreme courts questioning the procedure of law why am i giving this example to you again here in article 21 very very clear that according to the procedure established by law this procedure was established in 1973 earlier the procedure that was prevailing was 1898 that went off after the 14th law commission came out with the report 14th law commission came out with the report post independence that we got constitution of india we had 14th law commission report which came out and said that certain things have to be changed in the criminal justice system and the government worked on it and in 1973 words of colonial system were removed let me give one example one word of the colonial system 
This word you can never find in any law in the country today. Subject. It was addressed as subject. S-U-B-J-E-T. J-E-C-T. Subject. This was word part of colonial system. Instead of person, it used to be subject. You would have seen a film called Vasul Raja MBBS. There is one character called Anand. I pity him. When people used to, the students used to go and talk about subject. Correct? Then uh, the hero comes and says, subject, subject, he has life, he has, uh, that is where uh, the, the word, it was like that. The colonial system was with the word called subject, but now, in 1973, when the new criminal procedure code came, 1973, it was removed already. Whatever is colonial, we have removed it already. Now, what is there colonial, I didn't know. That uh, is removed by the present law. I don't find even a single thing what is not, what is colonial which is removed from the Bharatiya except the name Bharatiya. We have to get into another uh, understanding. Now, law uh, is part of the constitution of India. We all know under the constitution of India, there are three lists. One is union list, two is state list, three is concurrent list. My dear friends, uh, Dr. Babasaheb, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, when he actually evolved the system of uh, the various list, union list, state list, central list, uh, the, that is concurrent list, pardon me, he was very clear what items, what uh, laws, what uh, uh, enactment should come under which list. This was debated uh, in length in the Constituent Assembly. Sir, where do I find the Constituent Assembly debate? Now you go to the bookshops and ask Constituent Assembly debates by the Constituent Assembly members. He will say it is out of publication. This book is not published anymore. Can you understand? It is by the publication is by Lok Sabha. The parliamentary secretary has stopped publishing that book. It is a green color book, all the constant assembly debates. I have searched in dozens of shops across. I even asked for second hand books, stone books, but it is not available in the market. Then second set of books, which is not available in the entire country is the volumes of, uh, volumes of uh, writing speeches and uh, literatures by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. It stopped. They are not even printing it. So the most valuable information, which is actually very important for understanding the constitution is now out of print. Not because of the sale. Deliberately they are not printing. Here, constitutional assembly debates, we have, a, we have tried to download and then try to have a, a library of it on my own. And what I understand in the constitutional assembly debate, they discussed in length in 1949, somewhere in the month of July, how the list should be, union list, state list and concurrent list. The entire federal structure is not fractured because of this power. There are uh, divisional powers of uh, legislative, executive and judiciary, that is on the macro level. But from the functioning level, the respective state government and the central government are able to have their own set of powers is through the enactment. So union list has their union, uh, uh, the laws which are brought by the union government, Two state list is the state government. Third is the concurrent list. Under concurrent list entry two provides for the criminal law to be brought by the respective governments. Now it is in the concurrent list, don't forget. Under the concurrent list only the new criminal laws have come. Even the old criminal laws were in the concurrent list of the entry two. Now the question here is, sir, that means when there is a concur when the item comes under the concurrent list. Central government, that is union government can pass the law. State government also can pass the law. Is it possible, can they have a deviation from the main law passed by the parliament? This question comes or not. How many people have this question as I discuss? If you are able to get the question as and when I discuss, that means you are in the enlightened position of preparing for the UPSC. If you are still get, yet to get that enlightenment, that means you have to still work hard. Nothing wrong. It's just a matter of information. Today only I know about it. Nothing wrong. Many people don't know even after qualifying UPSC. So that it is not late. 
You are getting enlightened, you are getting information, just that you are going to research. Within a matter of five minutes, you are going to know this. Be uh, grateful to the grateful that you came to know at least now. Now, under the concurrent list, you have the two uh, uh, things to be known where there is a criminal law brought by the union government. The state government, it is in the concurrent list, then state government also can bring an amendment or pass an uh, uh, other law which will prevail is a question now. You all must be aware of uh, <coughs> provisions related to anticipatory bail. The anticipatory bail is uh, all of India, all the states actually has permitted except the state of Uttar Pradesh. Except the state of the concept of anticipatory bail is not there in the state of Uttar Pradesh. What is somebody is apprehending the arrest? Somebody is apprehending the arrest. He goes to the court and then either to the sessions court or to the high court 437 under the old law. No need to know about section. I'm just giving the highlight. 437, 436. You go to the sessions court. For the entire scheme of bail, 438, 437, 436 under the old law. That is criminal procedure code 1973. There is an equivalent provision under the new law also. That is BNS, that is Bharatiya Nyaya, BNSS, Bharati Nagarik Suraksha Sanita. Leave that part, but understand the. So here, Uttar Pradesh actually has uh, said that the anticipatory uh, bail provisions are not applicable to the whole state of Uttar Pradesh. So somebody commits a crime in Uttar Pradesh, he cannot apply for anticipatory bail. Why? That provision still is not applicable to Uttar Pradesh. So now, how is that that provision did not apply to Uttar Pradesh? Because Uttar Pradesh legislative, uh, legislated an act to say that this portion is not applicable to Uttar Pradesh. How, how was it able to do? Because of the concurrent list. Now I answered for the colonial. Let me answer to the state governments which are opposing the new law. That's where you have to zoom in and zoom out to understand. If you have any reservation about the new law, what should the respective state government should do? Because coming under the concurrent list, what should they do? That's all. What's your problem? Why are you blaming the central government? Why are you blaming the union government? You have the power in hand because the item comes under the concurrent list. Any deviation you have, you pass that. Yeah, it has to be, that's what I'm coming to that. It has to be approved by the president. Is advancing the discussion, but I am trying to come to the next point. Now the question comes, it has to be approved by the president. Which article says? Which article says? Nothing can be done without constitution of India. Not even an inch of work can move without a constitution of India under the law. It will hit the ceiling of the constitution of India. Which article of the constitution of India says that if the state government passes a law which is against the law passed by the union government are repugnant. I am not even, even using the word called against. There is nothing called against in a federal structure. The law is what you want as per the concurrent list. What you want you are passing. You have the power. But who has to give an assent? President has to give an assent. Which article empowers the state to pass this and which article says that the president has to approve? It is a very important thing to know. As per article 254 of the constitution of India, as per 254, my dear friends, these are all some of the questions which could come in your examination, which I brainstormed and came today. I Yesterday itself, I told you, I have not written any of the examination what you are aiming for. I don't even know what is the uh, system of uh, testing the examination. All that I know, these questions can come in the examination. If I, have, if I am an examiner, as an administrator, I would expect this because I am looking at you as a chief secretary. I'm looking at you as the law secretary. I'm looking at you as the cabinet secretary. I'm looking at you as the uh, national security advisor. When I can elevate to that level, and I'm giving the platform to elevate you at that level, from appointment, I can confer you with the IAS. When I'm looking at you at that level, then this level, what I expect is minimum. The effort that you need to do uh, put is multiple. Lawyer like me should know this, right? But as an administrator aiming to that position, you should definitely know this. There's no exception to this. 
so what could be the potential question first question what is what is the new law affecting which article the new law is affecting is the first question article 21 straight away because it says procedure established by law we are not talking about the civil law we are talking about the criminal law only criminal law can actually curtail the personal liberty life and liberty that is the reason you have bail bail is a norm jail is an exception but of course in economic offenses jail is a norm bail is an exception that is as per the supreme court judgment in 2016 so there are various things to have a, a understanding but let me first have a discussion about this set article 254 article 254 clause 2 is what i am trying to explain you to understand article 254 so article uh, 254 2 we have to understand what is the heading of this article it clearly starts pointing to the required question that you have what is the question you have sir if there is an inconsistency between two act which act will prevail state also it's in concurrent list step one it is in concurrent list the union government has passed this law there is a state government uh, also can pass this law which is repugnant to each other not against it is repugnant in case of repugnancy the word is repugnancy in case of repugnancy what will prevail so that is answered by 254 clause 2 the heading of the 254 is inconsistent inconsistency inconsistency between laws made by parliament and laws made by the legislature of states under that clause 2 and answers your question where a law made by a legislature of a state with respect to one of the matters enumerated in the concurrent list you need not write the clause try to observe it and uh, you can go to net or you can buy this constitution book today every parliamentarian is buying and showing it in the parliament before they take the position i hope you know that right even more than them you should have it because they don't even know the contents of it so observe the clause note some points that's enough because if you keep on noting what i'm so then you will miss out on the larger picture of understanding so here where a law made by the legislature of a state with respect to one of the matters enumerated in the concurrent list contains any provision repugnant this word is important you drop it in your note repugnant to the provisions of the earlier law made by the parliament or an existing law with the with respect to that matter then the law so made by the legislature of such state shall shall not put drop that uh, word in your notebook repugnant shall the word shall, it is mandatory provision you should means mandated it's not a uh, choice you may means you may leave now let's example don't leave you may leave now means what you have a either to sit here or leave you may you should means you should even then if you sit means that is different but you should means should that is mandatory shall if it has been reserved for the consideration of the president and has received his assent prevail in that state my good friend gave that point where he said if there is a repugnancy and the state passes state see there is a concurrent list there is entry to criminal law is passed by the union government you pass a law now it is repugnant to the law passed by the center that is union yes in that case what will prevail is the law passed by the state however the same has to be approved by the same has to be given assent by the president then and has received and it is just not in the approval of the president now in tamil nadu it's not going to happen i'm just giving an example i want to bring a, bring a, a provision like uttar pradesh last thing that can happen 
anticipatory bail is not applicable to Tamil Nadu. What should I do? You tell me the procedure as a law secretary. Going to the legislature, passing an act. After that, placing it before the president and assent of the president is something. Shall, mandatory. Without that, you cannot, uh, it is unconstitutional. So, you send it to the president, registered post. You have the acknowledgement. That's not going to work. He is, the president received it. Reserved for the reserved for the president, and he has not provided the assent. Then anticipatory provisions are exempt in Tamil Nadu. Answer: When is it actually applicable? President. So here is a provision 254, which is a saving point for the respective state government. Now the question here is whether president will give the assent or not. That question would have come eventually to you. So your mind says, no, I don't know what is the reason, but you know the reason. If you say, no. but meaning the constitution provides it. If Uttar Pradesh can exempt anticipatory bail, then Tamil Nadu can bring it, bring in more stringent provision, even for an organized crime and enact it as compared to the union government. What they provide new law? Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023. And any procedure that you want to deviate from the center, union government, then you can do that by passing a law. Who stops you? But it has to be approved by the president as per Article 254, Clause 2 of the Constitution of India. My dear friends, constitution does not work as a rule book. It works as uh, based on the person who is holding it. That's the beauty of the constitution. And who is holding it is a representative of the people. Yes or no? Few may not like, but majority has elected. Even if few would have elected, they come, come together as a team. Different parties come together as a team and enact one person. It is not in your hands. So understand the system that we have. We have a system where constitution works. It is not that I am saying it. Baba Sahib B.R. Ambedkar told on November 26th, 1949 in his speech. So here is 254. Ideally, if you are going to oppose, only in media it is not going to work out. My friends who heard about this article 254, next time if the CM of a state, any state for that matter, going to say that uh, new laws are not uh, effective, then what is the answer you have, my dear friend? What is the answer you have? Answer is 254. You start the procedure for 254, then let the president approve or not approve. That is their power, yes or no. Then you speak about it. But instead, you don't want to bring change, but you keep on saying that whatever the union government has brought. Again, for the union government, you have an answer. Sir, this is not colonial. 1973 colony, colon, colonization is already over. How many days you will speak about independence, independence? You got it in 1950. Absolutely, with the constitution of India, we have our own document in hand. If you are not changing, that means you are not changing. Don't talk about the British again and again. Gone are the days. So, point here to be noted is you should technically know how to understand the stuff. Let me move to the third aspect. My dear friends, uh, yesterday highlighted. So, are we not getting into the articles today? We got into the article 21. We got into article 20, 254. Fundamentally, fundamentally, I have given a solution to you if somebody is going to say the new criminal law is not the respective state government, whoever is opposing it can actually bring in new law and anything is repugnant, they can go, uh, they can uh, send it, send uh, reserve it for the president and the president should give the assent. The third important aspect. You must understand the existing criminal system whether it is effective or not effective is the question 
If it is not effective, you have to tell me because of whom it is not effective. There is a victim. There is an accused. There is a there is a accused. There is a victim. Are these two people are these two people reason for ineffectiveness in the criminal justice system? There is one guy who has done the crime. He is alleged to do a crime. Because that's how I'll say being a defending lawyer. Not in a single word I'll say he is a criminal because I'm a defending lawyer, right? So it's an alleged crime. Here there is a victim. Are these two people reason for the criminal justice system not being effective? Answer. Who is the reason? You tell me honestly. Then we will see what reforms are needed, what reforms are brought. Sir, no, sir, because of the accused only, the case is prolonging. Because of the victim only, the case is prolonging. Tell me honestly. What is that? System. Okay, now in the system, you are not pinpointing whom. Systemic problem is what you are trying to say. Okay, how many keep on saying macro level? Straight come and say what actually is the problem. Lack of knowledge of the existing system only is the problem. Straight I'm coming to the point. Here is a case where one of my clients got arrested. Do you think people who all get arrested have done a crime? That also you double sure that there, are, there could be some false allegation. Mechanically, they may even add the names. First, is there a change for this in the business? Yes. Answer no. Still, you can do mechanically. Let's assume there is a police officer in a locality. Neighborhood the person is keep on disturbing with his dog. He is not disturbing, but dog is barking. Whether he can add that name of that person in some crime somewhere. So even his knowledge. Does he have this power? After he gets transferred to some other place. There he thinks, okay, when we were in that home, that fellow was having a dog and it was barking, barking. I lost sleep. Now this is a new case that has come. Let me insert the name. Is it possible or not possible? Is there a check mechanism? Okay. He adds his name. I'm trying to make you understand the criminal justice system first. Then we'll see what has happened, what sections have got amended. Not that I'm, I'm giving a clear disclaimer. Not that everybody does it. There are cases where it has happened. Now, it's a procedure in law. Now, in F and the FIR, he adds the name. And now, the proceeding starts. Suddenly, he receives a summons. He goes to the police station. He is lift, after 24 hours, he is lifted to the prison. It can happen or not happen. Answer, please. The situation, what I try to provide you, can happen or not happen. Because that is the power of the police official. The same power only makes him to do good also. In 90%, 99% of the cases. But we still have the reservation that the power can be misused. Do we see any change in BNSS about this power getting misused? Answer is no. Then what did we change? Then what did we change? By the time many of the cases go to the court for trial, most of the cases get into acquittal. It is acquittal because lack of evidence. Witnesses are not turning up to the court. And the witnesses are made to wait. Why should a witness wait, first of all, you tell me? He's trying to help you her case, no? Is he getting incentives for it? In his own interest, he comes. Some, there is a murder that happens. There is somebody who is a witness. He comes and becomes a witness, gives a statement. The statement is taken into evidence. Until the case comes to an end, he has to keep coming to the court whenever he's called for, yes or no? Should he not be given that comfort? Answer is, is there anything that has changed with respect to witness? Answer is no. Actually changed. Under the new law, some of the Supreme Court judgments are nullified. There were Supreme Court judgments which were, uh, which were uh, those landmark judgments were read with CRPC, 1973. Example is handcuffing. Would have seen a film called J Beam. And that actor Surya makes a observation, says somebody will be handcuffed. And then he'll say, as per Supreme Court judgment, he should not be handcuffed. 
Now that Supreme Court judgment is nullified under the Bharatiya Nyaya, Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksh, Bharatiya Nagarik Sanita 2023. So ideally, those Supreme Court judgments that came, which were interpreted and provided for protecting Article 21 of the Constitution of India, with certain reasons which the judgment itself says, now there is a new law which again comes to square one of Criminal Procedure Code 1973. Is it a change or is it done with a purpose? Is a question. With a purpose. What purpose? Handcuffing or not handcuffing? How does it matter? In that case, okay, now you are like, uh, you have done this. Uh... You are not, nobody can say you have done a crime. In a, way. in a way, why should you say in a way? In a serious economic offense, I'm just giving an interpretation. Don't think you are right, actually, in a perspective. Because nobody would intend to be a criminal in the first place, correct? Because of that perspective, if somebody is brought into the allegation without being an innocent, innocent, not be pushed to the spirit of constitution. But innocent can also be alleged in the uh, in the crime. Yes or no? After that, through the court process, you will come out. Through the discharge, various methods which are uh, provided as part of the procedure. But the fundamental thing to be noted, there is a reason why Supreme Court, in spite of the fact that the Criminal Procedure Court did not provide for hand, did not talk about not to handcuff, Supreme Court went on to interpret or not. Then that means there was some reason that took constitutional bench. That is now nullified. Whenever you have to nullify Supreme Court judgment, you have to enact and bring it again. Take it from me. Down the line another three years. Again, the matter will go up to Supreme Court. Again, they will come back with the same decision. Again, Constitution Bench will interpret Article 21. Same kind of discussion, handcuffing will be taken over to minor offense. Now, as this, any offense is the situation now for handcuffing. Why am I giving this example to you? To make you understand, there are certain uh, landmark Supreme Court judgments which are nullified as part of the new. I'm just trying to. So there is a landmark judgment under the old law. Landmark judgment and landmark judgment got nullified, and it judgment. It is part of the enactment where handcuffing is now brought, brought as a provision. Again, we'll constitutionally question it. Again, constitutional bench will come out of the decision later point of time. I don't see that even in future, constitutional bench will come up with anything other than the previous landmark judgment of the Supreme Court. Because handcuffing, whether to be done or not, there was a reason why the Supreme Court interpreted that way in the past. So, fundamentally, there is no much uh, procedural, much procedural chain other than giving effect to the Supreme Court judgment. It becomes. So, first, this handcuffing is what I try to answer. Second, I'm going to discuss about this uh, it can be or should, will be a question in your examination. Zero FIR. Okay, before we get into the zero FIR, zero FIR how many of them heard this uh, term even before the new law? Zero FIR. Okay, when did you first hear? Okay. Where did you hear about it first? Only in Manipur issue? In the series. In the series. Which series? Ashram. Ashram series. Okay. In the one. Okay. I don't watch, but I don't know. So, but anyway, I appreciate that point. It is, uh, in that series, it talks about the procedure of zero affair. Okay. Good. But where did you hear about it first? No, this is the first time you're hearing. Okay. Some more people who raised hands. Where did you hear about it first time? Manipur. Only Manipur issue. Okay. Probably in the newspapers when you read uh, newspaper analysis. Okay. So this zero FIR was part of the decision of the Supreme Court already. Supreme Court kept on saying that zero FIR concept has to be implemented in the country. There is a offense that happened against a, a woman to safeguard her she moves away from here to another jurisdiction 
let's assume from somebody in chennai who is affected by a particular offence moves to save to safeguard from all this uh, miscreants she moved to vellore or uh, krishnagiri or whatever or probably vilupuram now she goes straight to the police station there under the old law that is criminal procedure code 17 that is when i'm going to introduce about section 154 of the old law and then talk about the changes in the new law it will take some time so we have to bear with me i am not here to give the entire concept pack you with all the section numbers and make you a lawyer i am not come here to transform you from administrator to lawyer i have just come here to bring the consciousness of the new law so that i provide that uh, opportunity for you to understand then you can assimilate automatically you are all well equipped with that kind of a knowledge so even i have i can speak about the new law for one month continuously but that's not my objective here my objective is to make you understand about the criminal justice system give a touch point of wherever the changes that has happened so first thing is about registering an fir that's what i'm trying to deal with step 1 what is fir what is information what is uh, first information uh, report what is first information statement what is cognizable offence what is non cognizable offence what is cognizable case what is cognizable offence so this is all technical aspect of it but i'll try to provide a bit of it i'm sure probably some people when they become ips officers yes probably you will have if you have interest then you will understand from a knowledgeable people who are around you without this also you can still progress in your promotions i'm not it might i'm not mandating it but if you get equipped with this definitely will be appreciated by the people around you so that appreciation required or not it's up to your decision decision is a choice that you have to make so here is an zero fr where that woman goes to the other decision goes to the police station and says sir this is my information whenever you give a, give a go to a police station you actually we say complaint to police station complaint the term itself is wrong the term itself is wrong you only give information you only give what information where do you give only in private complaint you give private complaint sir what is this sir there is so much into it, it is, what we are speaking is law you are not speaking uh, whatever you want when you go to a police station you give information that is the reason it's called first information report it is not first complaint report so whenever a client comes to us what we say in my in my office i use the same word called complaint because people he will not understand no you go to the police station give information what you will say i came to give complaint this man is saying information <laughs> then i cannot show him crpc and say, sir here then you will say this man is a mad mad guy all this discussion i can only do in the court not with the client then the client will become a lawyer i will become a client so what you actually give in the police station is not a complaint it is an information that information the police officer receiving it will categorize categorize it like whether he will listen everything but ultimately it come to a point whether this is a cognizable offense or a non cognizable offense then you will not going he is not going to communicate just the way i didn't communicate that you cannot give a complaint take for example mr suman is an ips officer he is an sp of chengalpet then i go to and give a complaint to him sorry information to him then he is going to receive that information and look at it he will keep the information and say no problem just come back tomorrow or the after this time going to see whether they are settling down but if it is a cognizable offense then he is going to take the cognizance of the matter now what is this cognizance non cognizable means uh, you cannot with warrant you cannot arrest. basic thing now you are all you will be able to understand cognizable offense on the receiving of information you can arrest you got it or not so fundamentally in case of uh, 
a criminal justice system the law the criminal law is set in motion only on the registration of fir sorry i will add to it i am purposely doing it the law the criminal law in motion is set in an offense one of the ways is giving information to the police if police doesn't take the information what will happen i'll come to that uh, jurisdiction issue which i was discussing that woman who went from chennai to really goes to the police station before that information that information is categorized cognizable offense or non cognizable offense if it is a cognizable offense whether they can register an fir under the old law answer yes or no that lady affected by an offense runs there to another district or other police station not in the jurisdiction where the offense happened feeling the threat feeling threatened about her life she goes to other police station gives information under the old law criminal procedure code 1973 which is not colonial law hello which is not colonial law remember that because everywhere headlines are carried as colonial law colonial law. i don't know why media is not saying it is not colonial so here whether the law which we we brought did not allow the woman actually to register an fir in other police station this was a situation of our criminal justice system so the supreme court it is not that the police is not allowing so man it is not that the police is not allowing what is not allowing law itself is not allowing which law in the criminal procedure code 973 is not allowing i am not talking about don't think that i am criticizing the new law i am just trying to explain you have to be very clear now i am speaking about old law because people who slept in between i am trying to awake and old law i am to be speaking about the old law where is not a concept at all when i say law it's a macro level but when i what actually stopped the police official not to file the case was section 150 read with section 150 is the old law it talks about, if you read both together only interpreting with the help of the lawyer like me then you will understand there is no jurisdiction at all they cannot register fir and transfer it further to the jurisdiction because offense happened in the place where it has to be tried in that place offense happened that police station has to register is what it is. now under the new law zero zero fir has been introduced the zero fir was already the concept which was enshrined by the supreme court of india the apex court that means old law plus zero fir as enunciated by the supreme court was the law of the land even in spite of the supreme court judgment coming in many of the police station in the country did not follow the concept called zero fir manipur incident happened over first july after first july answer me how is that zero fir was filed how did the zero fir was filed but why my sister and brothers who went to the other division did not get they did not get their fir suddenly so manipur uh, police officials came to know that zero fir is in place ah huh? answer me there is formally or informally the home ministry has communicated to file a zero fir suddenly they came to know about the supreme court judgment my uh, brothers and sisters across the country belonging to rural part of this country when they went for the offense the police official conveniently said it will not come here it is a revenue jurisdiction this is a criminal jurisdiction land matters civil uh, land matters if the offense happens in tirupurur you don't know the the person will not know whether to go to changalpet or come to thamaram commissary so this confusion is said to exist revenue jurisdiction then a crime jurisdiction are different why can't you first of all make it one what is the problem then he goes there he reports the crime then he will say in that location but again he goes there he says 
this is not a crime jurisdiction land grabbing that issue this issue you make the victim to run around by that time victim will lose all his energy exposed to miscreants they will be keep following everywhere wherever he goes when will the fir be filed so here the zero fir was not a concept new to india it was part of the supreme court observation but zero fir became a mandate now under the bharatiya nagrik suraksha sanhita let me enlighten you i am not here to give you the entire picture of the new law don't mistake me sir today sir only came and then gave only the few highlights of it i am just going to give you what could be the question that could come in the examinations but in a in depth manner so that you don't forget it at least you will remember something for authentication purpose i am reading out the section number not to make you remember for authentication what i say is authentic how do you know so i have to go to the section and read it and show so that you know some authenticity in my discussion now section 154 information in cognizable offense i am talking about the old law i'll come to the parallel law i myself should know the new section only now do you understand i am talking about 154 because 154 is a part of discussion every time now i have to go and check the table 154 of the old law new law which section changed there which page number for that separate book we have bought now two books on two sides and then we keep one book in the middle to so check which section has become what from that to what change now what is the supreme court judgment that got nullified this is the exercise that we are undergoing earlier what we used to do this two sets of books were not there only this book or referring it do the work for the client yes or no now our work got multiplied you should do. they will give a <laughs> now or you will give a the point to be noted here is section 154 is a historical section fir means 154 154 is what we know we go to the police station sir 154 section sir file an fir no what is the problem you got information or not now uh, before i go to the police station even policeman is asking at which section sir because the writer will be there not that every case will be dealt by the ips officer yes or no even ips officer also is now looking at which section books and all is is trying to buy and see or calling uh, people like us they are asking us to lecture them that's what is going on now so considering here information in cognizable cases the word section 154 cognizable case is different from cognizable offense there is a set of non cognizable offenses with cognizable offense then that becomes a cognizable case did you understand you didn't understand no thank you <laughs> that gives an opportunity for me to explain there are multiple sections file you would have seen ipc so and so section ipc so and so section when you see an fir how many of them are not seen fir until now not for you but for generally how many of them have not seen the fir at all then what i say will not be able to understand you go today and check the format of fir that will be blurred you will not be able to understand what is the content of it if that is the document you have seen it you have, you filed a case okay you have got the fir with you is it clear did you understand anything that means i have a work to do as a lawyer i'm just giving an example so it is not that ordinary people will understand the fir here the section numbers are provided check act name section number that of there are five section numbers which are brought in a fir three section numbers are cognizable sorry non cognizable pi out of 5 non cognizable means the police officer should go to the magistrate to get a warrant two sections of the same fir are cognizable offense then that case will be called as cognizable case okay if we bit on a puriya you buy a milk from a shop it's in white color then you take the milk add rose uh, rose uh, essence uh, 
then some part will be white and some part will be rose of the milk. What will be, uh, what will be the color of the milk? A rose. Not uh, pink is different from rose. Okay, rose color. Rose color. Let go. Then it becomes a rose milk. Now can you take milk, uh, white color milk from there? It's possible. Similarly, now you understood. Now here you have cognizable offense, non-cognizable offense, which is cognizable offense or non-cognizable offense. Are you all convinced that cognizable offense is serious? Why is it serious? Because human uh, kind of people who are aspirant for IAPS will get the power. Example. So it is so on the instant of it, he can arrest you. So that fears you. So cognizable offense, offense with the non-cognizable offense, that because of the element of uh, cognizable offense coming there, that that becomes a cognizable case. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you first question. Non-cognizable offense. All the sections are non-cognizable. All the sections are non-cognizable. Then whether section 154 applicable? Whether section 154 applicable? As don't think, don't go to the section of because it does not become a cognizable case. Second question. All sections are cognizable. Then Cognizable offenses, cognizable case. Third, there is three section which is non-cognizable, two which is cognizable, then whether it will become cognizable case? Yes. Why? Even one single section cognizable. Now, there is a non information comes to the hand of the police. But what will police do? If you are a police, what will you do? Honestly, tell me. Add a non-cognizable. One section is enough, boss. To make it as a cognizable case so that it becomes an FIR case. Do you understand? Right. I try to explain something which even lawyers don't know. If you have come to know, that means you can become a better, better, better administrator. Don't become a lawyer. <laughs> Go to a lawyer friend of you today. Without telling my name. That you have attended my session. There I came to know about section 154 of the CRPC 1973. Not the new law also. Because if you say new law, you will say myself now only studying the. Don't call me in which one. Old law means you should have definitely know practicing under the senior. Other two criminal cases. Every day you will visit the police also. Police station. Actually lawyer need not visit the police station actually. There is no mandate in any law that the lawyer has to visit the police station. He is only aiding the client. Okay, somebody will be keep visiting the police station. Ask them what is a cognizable case, what is cognizable offense, what is non-cognizable offense. If they answer, please let me know. Most of them don't even know what is cognizable, what is non-cognizable, what is cognizable case. Here, they are not saying information in non-cognizable case. They say information in cognizable case, not even offense. So a, a set of offenses where there is an element of cognizable offense, one offense, one section, then the entire case will become cognizable. So you understood or not? This understanding is very, very important to know the power of FIR. I was just thinking from morning how to explain this. That itself is a challenge for me. You understood or not? Not that I explained this, explained this with ease. Why should I explain this with ease? Do you think that I think in this direction? A cognizable offense, non cognizable hey, FIR, what is the problem? Cognizable case. But what is different? You, I'm trying to enlighten you people, no? So that means I should be clear when I communicate. The rose milk example, I got it here. But uh, I was just thinking. I was thinking when I was drinking rose milk in the uh, childhood, whether... Uh, whether uh, it became rose, or it can come to white milk. Not possible. Like that, non-cognizable offense, cognizable offense, it will become a cognizable case. So what we are essentially discussing in the criminal justice system, which is very serious, is article, uh, sorry, uh, section 154 is information in cognizable case. Now let us see the first paragraph. That shows every information relating to the commission of a cognizable offense. If given orally to an officer in charge of a police station, shall be reduced to writing by him 
or under his direction and be read over to the informant. And every such information, whether given in writing or reduced writing as opposite, shall be signed by the person giving it and the substance thereof shall be entered in the book to be kept by such officer in such form as the state government may prescribe in this behalf. Practically in a police station, when you enter, you give not complaint, but you give information. You are not a complainant, but you are an informant. Section itself case clearly. I am not saying this. Anywhere in the section, they said complainant. If tomorrow, some of them are going to become IPS officer and I come to your office, so that please call the complainant means that means you are lacking knowledge. Probably that uh, police official, if you did not know, you should have corrected him. But if you are going to use the word called complainant, being a senior officer, then I really doubt your uh, knowledge about the law. So it is informant. You have information. There is a oral information that comes to you. It is not need not be in writing. The section, uh, the old law recognized oral information also. I will come to the point where what did, what does the new law uh, recognize apart from oral and written? If uh, let's take that same example of that uh, woman. Now, as per new law, zero FR is allowed. She goes to another jurisdiction, goes to the police station. Now the police cannot say, I don't have jurisdiction because new law, Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanitha says you file zero FR. First problem is resolved. First problem is resolved. Next comes, the police officer will say, Ma, please give it in right. Not say. Why? Section 154 clearly says, oral, orally. That is already allowed. That is already allowed under the old law. She, uh, she, gives, uh, com, uh, she gives information orally. Who will, uh, in the police station, administratively, there will be a writer. There will be a writer. Somebody will keep on be speaking, you will be writing. Have you seen? Even if you ask, I will write, you will not allow. There will be a set of police officers who will say, you write, eh? as though I will take it, I have written. So there will be a writer, yes or no? There will be a, a SHO also will be there, station house will be there. So writer, the role of the writer is to take this information. If it is in writing, then reduce it to writing and then present this information in the uh, police, sta police station. Then, police need not do any preliminary inquiry under the old law. Under the old law. So, under the old law, uh, FIR can be filed, but zero FIR was not the concept. Now, the zero FIR has come. Under the old law, orally, you go and give an information that has to be taken on record and reduced to writing mandatorily. mandatorily. There can be a oral FIR. Can there be a oral FIR? In the FIR, can you mention it is oral FIR? Can you mention? It has to be definitely has to be in a written form. It has to be in a written form. Now that it is in a written form, now oral was allowed. It has to be in writing. New thing that has come, zero FIR is new thing under the new law. New thing that has come is even Electronic communication also is an information with respect to congressable case. Electronic, earlier under the old law, if you send by email, the police official will not register a FIR because he is not considering that as an information. Email. Most of the police stations in uh, Tamil Nadu whom I have dealt with is mostly they are dealing with Gmail. Gmail is official communication. Huh? Is it an official communication? What is an official communication of the government? If you receive a hall ticket of UPSC from Gmail, will you accept? From where it should come? Okay, website, okay. Uh, government recognized, nic.in, gov.in, yes or no? So, here, many of the police stations are now using Gmail. Let's assume, by this new law coming in, it is now mandated that every police station has to be enabled with a proper government recognized email. Police receives the information through WhatsApp. Whether can he register FIR for a cognizable offense? Only for a cognizable offense, he can register FIR. Whether he can do 
the questions are answered in the new law answer is yes so electronic mode of communication of information under the old law 154 under the new law we will see the section later but i just gave it for your understanding don't confuse yourself by receiving the information through electronic board the police can register the fir the second important change that has happened however the new law in certain cases requires the police to do preliminary inquiry the so okay let me ask this question to you is there a difference between enquiry and inquiry sir spelling what a difference only in a i e in solidarity is there a difference between enquiry 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 e n q u i r y is my spelling right okay i n q u i r y is my spelling right as okay right i e is there a difference don't tell me i and d again i'm telling you what is the difference so what's your name tejas yes tejas okay okay so inquiry is what you are saying whoever is giving that i am inquiry i enqu inquiring them okay inquiry is you are looking around for okay for well, like where is he what is he doing you are the informant to the police you are the informant to the police not necessarily you need to be a victim certain times even accused can be an informant possible or not possible the accused whom you should actually search will directly come to you and say i am the accused possible or not possible sir i am the accused sir please take me to the custody possible or not possible is he a informant or the accused both but uh, 154 says the fir can be registered only if it is informant that means accused coming and talking about his own case will he become an accused or is he an, whether fir can be filed in the first place because law does not say accused it says informant no or inquiry now let an informant comes he gives a complaint when will i do inquiry when will i do inquiry now for example nalla irkingla nalla irkingla okay nalla irkingla like that only inquiry and inquiry somebody comes to your home the guest nalla irkingla eppadi irukanga okay this is a normal tone normal person will ask like this you are burning with jealous you are burning with very factors various factors it does just not uh, money or education chumma jealous possible chumma nothing chumma jealous want to be i'll be jealous i now i want to be jealous okay i'll be jealous okay tell me the point sir that's what you are trying to ask me lurking la ah uh, not like that lurking la that means nalla irukka koodadu okay now what which is inquiry which is inquiry yeah, no no in case come here we will go to later relative comes nalla irukinga veetla eppadi irukanga pasanga eppadi irukanga is it inquiry or enquiry ha e or i e how to say it is enquiry basic ah vaanga ukkarenga nee da informant ah enna aachinga idu enquiry you know you are the accused ah how did you go to that place tell me ha ah, okay what were you doing on that day it is inquiry if the same enquiry oh it was a holiday what were you doing on that day it is a enquiry so can you understand what is the difference between i and d so ideally police officer while he is investigation investigating the matter what is actually he is doing is inquiry is the procedure he starts with as per law 
even accused will take the role of an informant when the accused itself is an informant. So cognizable case can be registered even when an accused comes directly. Now here in the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanitha, electronic information also is an information by the informant. Based on that, you can find an FIR. The next change that has happened in filing of the FIR is there is a new concept of, apart from zero FIR, EFIR, electronic FIR. In fact, uh, the present Honorable Chief Minister of uh, Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Chandrababu uh, that is sending the police official to the doorstep to register an FIR. But uh, before his term uh, got completed in the previous regime, so he was not able to do it. But uh, at the time, when he actually spoke about it, it was all dream. But now it is mandated under the, under the new criminal justice system, that is Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanita. See, when I keep talking about procedure, you should always remember offenses under IPC, that is Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023. The procedure is under Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanita 2023. The evidence for the offense through the procedure, procedure that you implement on the evidence is there. The evidence aspect is there in Bharatiya Saksha Adiniyam, Saksha Adiniyam 2023. So, EFIR is a new concept under the uh, Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanhita. Wherein, let's assume if a crime is committed, most of the time the victim and the accused both have, have the FIR. If you are an accused uh, lawyer, getting an FIR itself is a Herculean task. Because with the FIR, bail, anticipatory bail or bail as the case may be, you file, but uh, getting that FIR is a very Herculean task. You go to the police station, ask FIR, they're not going to give you. Sh should they give you? There's no mandate in law. So, law is silent. Criminal procedure law code is silent. It is not that the F a police official can give the FIR in your hand. They go to the court, get it. Once the FIR is filed, the FIR is in the court. If uh, you are apprehending arrest, in the zero effort scheme, where the case is filed, let's assume there is an offense that uh, happened in a particular jurisdiction. And earlier, what was the case? If you inform the jurisdictional post, police police of police uh, station or that magistrate under which that offense comes, then there only the affair would have got registered. But now, under the zero affair, it will be registered somewhere. Adding to that, now the concept e affair has come. Ideally, identity of a person is uh, provided with an address and everything. Then you can go and check in online and access the EFIR. That's a new concept that has come. So along with zero FIR, if you don't bring the concept of EFIR, then it will become unconstitutional. Because how will that accused know where the affair has been filed? You all know about the uh, uh, FIR getting filed across the country on a famous journalist in India, which got finally the Supreme Court uh, clubbed with the FIR. So, about uh, multiple cases filed across the country. So, these regime, these things have happened in the past, correct? Second, where FIR is filed, people will not know unless you have the EFIR. So, along with the zero FIR, the second important thing that has happened is EFIR. Now, sheets were earlier, Victims that were not allowed to examine unless they apply the copy, go to the court. Now, charge sheet also should be made accessible to the victim under the Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanita 2023. Earlier, charge sheets were given to the accused served in the court when the charges were committed on them. The process of, uh, process of the criminal law is filing of the FIR after that, he is arrested. He may apply for bail or he may be in the prison. Then he may, uh, then the charge sheet is filed on time. Then he will become accused under trial. Subsequently, charges are 
charges are served on him commit uh, committer of the charges then subsequently charge sheet is uh, given so you will know what are the charges then after that trial until then he is accused in a trial either in the custody or by obtaining a bail this is the system here we have efir along with the zero fir the fir can be accessed by both accused and victim victim also should know what is the content of the fir or not of course victim will be provided officially on fir by the police station but accused also should have the access of fir which will hit article 21 of the constitution of india so that is made now possible under the new uh, criminal law that is bharatiya nagrik suraksha sanita 2024 Second important thing which I already told you about yesterday is forty days, sixty days that custody matter, which we discussed in length. But after filing of the FIR, so I have very clearly told what you give in the police station is only information and not a complaint, and they register FIR. And as they re receive the information before FIR, there is one process which most of the police station don't follow. It's a requirement of the police diary, maintaining of diary. there book is maintained so you receive the information that's called first information statement information the informant comes he gives a statement that is first information statement that statement is converted into content of fir so that there is some concept called fis that fir that fis has to find the entry in the police diary then subsequently fir is filed after fir is filed then charge sheet is now mandated to be filed by 60 days how many days 60 days charge sheet is mandated to be filed by 60 days after 60th day whether delayed charge sheet can be filed if you are filing after 60 days then mandatory bail will be provided unless the mandatory bail has to be provided that is 173 to of the uh you have to make a final report so these are some of the important uh, changes that has happened under the uh, new criminal law which i tried to highlight this is enough to understand further amendments that has happened but i am going to also give you a highlight about other major changes that has happened as a highlight now for okay one more thing which i wanted to mention which is very important from your examination perspective if there is an efir then it has to be signed within 2 days my dear friends uh, i'm sort talking about 2 days i'm talking about 60 days i'm talking about 15 days of police custody all these things you know why these are all very important in the criminal procedure code because article 21 says procedure established by law any deviation from the procedure you are affecting the life and personal liberty of a person so that is the reason procedure is very very important in the भारतीय नागरिक सुरक्षा संहिता 2023. Then you have the most other important thing, mob lynching. Because you being in the public administration, the lookout of the examiners will be on the mob lynching. Is my prediction. In what whatever form they may ask the question, in whichever. Uh, choose in field of examination or a paper whatever they can ask
under the new law, this is the bar act. We call this as a bar act. I'm sure that you all know about it. People who don't know about it, this is the bar act where we have the exact words of the act. Under the new law, We have we have uh, section uh, 103. My dear friends, under section 103, for the convenience for all of you, I'm trying to quote the exact provision. And uh, don't think I know this section. I'm also learning along with you. So be comfortable. Only thing I know how to read a law. That's all. So you should not assume that I know everything that I have come here. Mom lynching up a provision and that body can all about who do act. That means how many times I have to read to master it. But for you, this is an examination. So read and then get marks and move on. Here, when a 103 subsection 2, we call it subsection. Section, subsection, clause, subclause. Explanation, proviso. This is the structure of a law. In section 103, punishment for murder, under that, section 103, subsection 2, talks about mob lynching. Under mob lynching, where when a group of five or more person acting in concert commits murder on the ground of race, caste, or community, sex, place of birth, language, personal belief, or any other similar ground, each member of such group shall be punished with death or with imprisonment for life. And shall also be liable to fine. Shall also be liable to fine. Okay. Or more. It is possible not. Tough. Court. So, the see the following words. Non cognizant. Yeah. The wording is very important. Cognizable. So it is a affair can be registered. Now that you are all clear. Yes or no? Anybody is not clear about it? Sir, so I have a doubt. What is cognizable now? Then finished. <laughs> okay. Then you have cognizable, non bailable. That means bail cannot be granted by the police, then it has to go through the process of bail under the uh, uh, for the in the court. Then non-compoundable, you cannot come to a settlement. Sir, I somebody murdered somebody. I'll give money. <laughs> we'll settle the matter. Should be allow? Should be allow. Should the murder case be compoundable? Answer is no at any point of time. Check bounce case. Check bounce. What's your name? Example. Swipe. Swipe gives me a check. He took a loan from me. I go and present the check. It bounces. Now, can I go and file a criminal case on him? Answer is yes. Answer is yes. Okay. Answer is yes. As per Negotiable Instruments Act. Then uh, is the case is going on in the court. Suddenly he comes and says, "Sir, I'll settle the amount. Should it be compoundable or non-compoundable? Compoundable, and it this is a check bounce case. There's a murder case. Can it be compoundable? At no point of time it can be compoundable. So here that's the reason: cognizable, non-bailable, non-compoundable, and trialable by court of sessions." It's a sessions court for because court of sessions will come. Magistrate, sessions court. After that, high court, supreme court. Trial court is either magistrate court for offenses punishable less than seven years. More than seven years, then it will come to court of sessions. This is a sessions case, court of sessions. After sessions court, then it will go to the high court and to the supreme court. For example, Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. It cannot be by a magistrate court. 
there is a designated sessions court which becomes a trial court for the prevention of money laundering so here mob lynching should be tried by the court of sessions let us move on to the next part of the discussion Yesterday, I discussed about the community service, which I don't want to discuss today. Organized crimes. Organized crimes. This is under section 111 of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023. This is, please don't disturb me because I've come here to give my valuable time. And I never wanted this, I never will scold a student. But if it goes out of limit, then student cannot be in my class. Because I am not an ordinary professional. Or a, I have come here with some passion to transform you people with the knowledge that I have. It's not a joke that I, I try to make this subject very simple, try to reach you people. My time is very, very, very important for me. Beyond anything else. Probably it may not be for you. Because you may not value the time. The second phase, if somebody is going to disturb me, I'll pinpoint and then lift them, lift them out. I'm not going to send them out. I'll go question them in the past two hours lecture. That is more punishable than anything else. I 100% know you cannot answer. So please understand. And don't think that I've come for teaching for the first time. I've taught in the IIMs. I've taught in multiple, uh, to the multiple stakeholders in the country. So please understand my time is very valuable. I've come here, I'm reading the sections, I'm trying to explain you, and uh, don't think that I have come across this section only now. When I come for the lecture, I've prepared it already. I told you for the ease of convenience, you should not feel alienated from the subject. That's the technique of any professor. And I never wanted to make uh, this comment actually, because we're coming to the fag end of the lecture. And I'm even more worried about the students who are listening, actually. They're listening with, they've come with a lot of aspiration from a village, or a town where I have come from. So, and I feel the same pain because when I uh, went to the academies to study for my CA, CS and CAWA, whatever, people used to be the same, whoever is going to disturb. Some may disturb with uh, their own ways, some may disturb asking questions, sitting in the front. But real aspirant will try to grasp everything and come to the question at the last minute, last uh, phase of the discussion. Humbleness is a first virtue of learning. Humility is the first virtue of teaching. So I'm with the humility. You should be with the humbleness so that we bridge in learning process. I come halfway, you come halfway, we can understand the subject well. So please, this is my humble submission to all of you. Right? So, organized crime. Section 111 of Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023. See, this uh, disturbance causes a wonderful equation that was going on in the class. Right? Section 111, subsection 1. Any continuing unlawful activity, including kidnapping, robbery, vehicle theft, extortion, land grabbing, contract killing, economic offense, cyber crimes, trafficking of persons, drugs, weapons, or illicit goods or services, human trafficking for prostitution or ransom by any person or group of persons acting in concert, even in mob lynching. You found the phrase called acting in concert. They work like a professionals. You understood or not? Land grabbing, child trafficking. They set up a system actually. This is called organized crime. Certain crimes happen random, in a random manner because of anger, emotional issues. Those all can be controlled and uh, it is a random uh, uh, phase. But organized crimes, they were they are established to do the crime. They know that they are doing crime, that they have system to do the crime. That is now addressed under the new law. That is addressed, addressed under the new law. By any person or a group of person acting in concert, comma, singly or jointly, either as a member of an organized crime syndicate or on behalf of such syndicate, by use of violence, 
comma, threat of violence, comma, intimidation, coercion, or by any other unlawful means to obtain direct or indirect material benefit, including a financial benefit, shall constitute organized crime. All this, uh, all these films where they show organized crimes, recent films which come and show you uh, the organized crimes. You just you can imagine those kind of crimes are brought under section 111 of the uh, Bharati Nyaya Sanita 2023. Under that, the definition is provided. So if you want to know what is the definition of organized crime, syndicate, it says organized crime syndicate means a group or two or more persons who acting either singly or jointly as a syndicate or gang indulge in any continuing unlawful activity. Continuing unlawful activity. He is born to do the unlawful activity. Like Don, Dada, Boss, and the Mari. You were seen in that uh, film and all. No? Certain roles are vilified. Certain times, negative characters, they become, they show it as though they are heroes. So, how they show in a film the same thing matters. Whether you are getting inspired or you are against it. Generally, what they show, an organized per, uh, crime person doing for the society, correct or not? For the poor people. Yes or no? In a film like KGF, what is the ultimate objective in that film? What is the reason he is doing so much of gold? Like, eh? Why? For his mother. Just look out, come back from the movie and just think independently. Whether does it make a sense actually? Okay. General statement of an organized company. In my childhood, I was suffering. Who was not suffering? Everyone. Maybe the degree of suffering may be different so that you go against the society or you go and empower the society. You understand? And this is the pattern of this organized crime is promoted in the films since the time immemorial. Actually, the film is a pattern set in the global. And the pattern is not in the film. It is not something that has come random. You will all, only the, uh, this pattern of movies will be successful. That's what the directors learn and then come and shoot. Okay. Here, the organized crime is a very important uh, point to be noted for the purpose of the new law. If you ask me whether this kind of organized crime is already addressed in any laws across India, any state laws, Answer is yes. If you are from Maharashtra, then you know you have Maharashtra Control of Organized Crime Act 1999. In 1999, MCOCA Act was brought, but now the same MCOCA Act is now incorporated in Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023. Let me ask this question to you. You have a central union law now where organized crime is uh, incorporated as a provision. Already in Maharashtra, you have an act, which is there for Maharashtra uh, Control of Organized Crime Act 1999, which will prevail in Maharashtra with respect to organized crime. Now, here the question comes, the point of uh, law comes, question of law is, there was an existing MCOCA Act 1983 that is not uh, repealed, but the new criminal law comes now, which is a union, union law. Now, I'm not making any change or nothing is repugnant to the union law, but it was already existing in the state. Now, what will prevail is the question. What will prevail is the question. Answer is state law will prevail, but if you find anything repugnant for adequate safeguard and to ensure that it does not become unconstitutional, you still have to go to the president. If you go and ask Maharashtra government, they would not have done this. They would not have done this. You can go and check. MCOCA Act 1983, 1999, which is constitutional and uh, it was all existing along with the old law. So the extent of the old law, you had it. Now the new law replaces it. The question comes, the question of law comes, should you now go to the president and they can assent to the already existing law or you should keep quiet? It's a question of law now. This may not be your question in the examination, but I'm trying to bring you the knowledge of the same. Next comes a very important change under the new law with respect to economic offenses. My dear friends, in the recent time, in the past uh, five years, 
the across the country more than 5000 enforcement directorate cases are filed uh, enforcement uh, case information reports are filed 5000 533 36 people are arrested i am not saying this the supreme court as part of the bail granted to the cm of uh, delhi arvind kejriwal the supreme court has given the observation more than 5000 ecis are registered 536 people were arrested and more than uh, searches 4000 searches are conducted across the country is what is the statistics all about now these economic offenses are becoming prevalent even though prevention of money laundering act 2002 is uh, now in force but not all the offenses are coming under the prevention of money laundering act 2002 it's a very interesting phase of the criminal system for economic offense in india that you have a predicate offense you have a predicate offense which is an fir filed an offense that predicate offense has to find a place in the schedule of the prevention of money laundering act 2002 only when that predicate offense finds a place in the schedule of the prevention of money laundering act 2002 then enforcement directorate can do investigation with respect to money laundering offense i hope you understand now take for example like a law like mines and minerals uh, uh, development and regulation act that is mining sand mining offense sand mining offense is not a scheduled defense of the prevention of money laundering act 2002 but most of the time sand mining firs are registered the affairs are clubbed and enforcement directorate starts the proceeding. That sand mining offender or the alligated sand mining offender goes to the court and says, this MMDR act is not applicable. They have to take the cognizance of offense without they taking the cognizance of offense and it is not even listed in the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. So ED cannot investigate. Now the lesson that you need to learn, if anything and everything where ED has to come, that offense has to be listed in the scheduled offense. So, State files and FIR, only because state files and FIR, ED comes for investigation. ED cannot file an FIR. I hope you can understand because they are not police officer. This is a very important thing to note. Unless a state files an FIR, ED cannot come. Or CBI files an FIR, ED cannot come. Delhi Police Establishment Act became CBI. Don't forget that. DP, uh, DBSP, yeah, SE, right? Delhi Police uh, Establishment Act, right? That is CBI. The designated as CBI is a central agency to investigate. CBI files an FIR, then PMLA investigation can happen. Why I'm giving this example to you? Economic offenses are class apart. They are a crime against society. And their economic offenses, the pervasiveness, and the materiality, pervasiveness means it spreads in the society. Do you understand? One economic offender, there is example. There is one drug peddler, example. He is booked under NDPS Act. What is actually booked is crime. But how do you ensure that his proceeds are brought back to the government through the Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002? But now, under the new law, it, the economic offense is also defined as a self-contained thing. Now, it is a general law. Where there is a special law, special law will prevail. So, general law will be silent. Unless there is a specific mention of the special law. Now, here, economic offense includes criminal breach of trust, forgery, counterfeiting of currency notes, bank notes, government stamps, avala transactions, mass marketing fraud, MLM, mass marketing fraud, or running any scheme to defraud several persons or doing any act in any manner with a view to defraud any bank or financial institution or any other institution or organization for obtaining monetary benefits in any form is also brought under organized crime. Most of the MLM, respective state governments have economic offenses unit. They are actually function effectively. Economic offenses wing, separate wing. Okay. So this is the one of the other change. Snatching is also provided as a new offense under the uh, snatching okay a fresh uh, snatching of a chain or a mobile phone by a member or a gang or a, even an individual not associated with the gang snatching of a phone or a snatching as a crime is a very important crime you may think it is very simple i don't know how many of them have seen go to the youtube and check snatching how many lives are affected women's are affected okay in the name of snatching they will fall 
more than the uh, chain that uh, they get admitted in the hospital and uh, sometimes they also lose their life so snatching is a very very important crime that they have tried to bring as a separate provision under the new law next important thing criminal abatement outside india here any criminal activity done outside india whether that can be extended outside outside india answer is yes there are already enabling provision of the old criminal uh, procedure code 1973 where uh, jurisdictional is outside india still they can be investigated through a summons there is a procedure established called letter of regulatory and mutual legal assistant treaty which india has signed this can be a question in your examination if i am an examiner i will test you on mlat mutual legal assistant treaty because of the new law has come that becomes effective here earlier under the old criminal uh, procedure code 105b talks about implementing mlat where there is an absconder who goes to another jurisdiction india in november 2020 during the covid time 18 november 2020 has signed mutual legal assistant treaty with 48 countries including uae many of the european nations where if an offender goes there to bring him back to india there is a procedure established between two countries not that you cannot bring now the question comes then why is police police silent they don't know this procedure can you imagine letter of regulatory letter of regulatory is a procedure for the court trial court to send a letter to the trial court of the jurisdiction where he is residing through the court process he can be brought to the court and then brought to the custody mlat is a procedure established by the government in november 2020 where they will go to that jurisdiction and then bring him back to india this is as per the pres prescribed procedure of law and the approval of home ministry has to be got not even uh, this is a very important thing that has happened mlat could be one of the question in your examination if i am an examiner i will definitely try to ask this to ensure because we say that certain people have offended the country and then they left there is no way to bring them back 48 countries indian government has signed if you want you go and check that notification which came in november 2020 these are all important things even many people who practice law don't know but you should know as an administrator because it's not that your roles are defined when you are taken into the uh, system you may become a education secretary or you may become a law secretary wherever you go it is not that you should have a knowledge but you should know where to go and search for the knowledge that's all is important first thing if you are becoming a home secretary what you should do you go and check the home secretary website only and get all the notification what they passed and how is it affecting two days to three days you should read about it and then only implement it it's a simple nobody is going to tell you the mlat has come you should know how to implement mlat this knowledge of mlat i got randomly there was a book i picked up uh, called white crime, white collar crime then i saw i was always having a doubt when somebody offends the uh, does an offense here please the country is there a procedure to bring him back there was a strict rule but that book highlighted subsequently i filed many petition in the uh, court on this matter so this is the new thing that is happening in the uh, criminal justice system and new law also recognizes that mlat and uh, letter of regulatory as a procedure to bring bring them back and the second important thing they created assets based on the uh, offense they they did an offense and took money and then created assets outside india then fugitive economic offenders act is applicable for the fugitive economic offenders also prevention of money laundering act enforcement directorate can investigate to the extent of assets that they have created outside india we can attach the assets in india also this is an amendment brought in 2019 in the prevention of money laundering act so the entire criminal justice system is undergoing a change now uh, to summarize what could be the examiner's uh, look out is first of all article 348 which i explained yesterday article 21 which i explained today article 254 from the perspective of constitution having this new criminal laws in place constitution becomes general so they will ask 254 but you will not even know why they asked that's a problem but keep keep this in mind they have asked this because new criminal laws have come take for example mcoca act is already prevailing in maharashtra or tamil nadu talking 
against union government saying that uh, this criminal laws are not effective then they can actually pass an act like mcoc you know if you say organized crime under the new law is not effective then pass an act like mcoc send it to the president do you think president will not approve definitely if it is an enhanced procedure yes or no for the welfare of the people so i think article 21 article 348 which i spoke yesterday about the english language uh, three whether criminal procedure code is applicable now or a uh, new act is applicable uh, i have still more uh, sections to discuss but i don't have time today uh, it clearly says the new act itself says under section 530 the last section of the bharatiya nagrik surakshya sanhita it clearly says repeal and saving it is repealed to the extent where new new crimes are reported saved to the extent where the old crimes are now in the court so ideally both act will prevail until the last case in the country is disposed of under the old law the old law will prevail as though the new law is there that is the reason is said you cannot keep changing the criminal law in the country once you bring one set of criminal law you can bring amendment in the criminal law probably you can bring an amendment in the organized crime probably you can bring an amendment in the economic offenses or even even add new section like 111 111a serious organized crime something like that but you cannot bring all together a new bharatiya nyaya sanhita 2050 and then bring in more confusion so i think this law is set to prevail in the days to come and many more constitutional questions are supposed to be answered in the uh, supreme court of the apex court if you have any questions i am ready to take up and we started late so i continued for up to 15 minutes extra so if you have any questions please ask those questions i am ready to answer those questions yeah or you can ask from there so you see this concept in the right yeah so who are like the order actually that person and who were assassinated who are going so yeah yeah go ahead with the question yeah ah uh, yeah directly or indirectly uh, if the criminal conspiracy in one of the munadi 120b criminal conspiracy 120b if you put you can put and you can be brought if you have instigated that crime hours because nobody will be convinced about it in a short time but my i support reservation for purpose of social capital until a particular community reaches a social capital reservation has to be there other methods other methods is rural versus urban government school versus private school reservation you you, you are talking about the merit in an examination where students have come from a village in a government school now we have access of education we need quality of education now in case of quality of education what one mantra that will work in this country is to make the government official son and daughter study in government school we want government job for which we are struggling to study and come up come up we want a bride and groom from government job but we don't want to make sure uh, make our kids study in a government school why not mistake of you but the system has to adopt the government school now tahsildar bao ias officer chief secretary home secretary chief minister uh, any immediate family members of the chief minister or the ministers of the government if they allow their government kids to study quality of education will ultimately improve even after that government school require internal reservation in the competitive exams or the entrance examination now if you bring this kind of a tilt this model will private schools run next question then in this model will the quality of education improve it will improve it will improve no sir it will improve because the ias officer or the vao or tahsildar is going to question that school so there will be an inbuilt accountability in that locality so 
this is one reservation model which can be further enhanced in the system. So if you're asking me about reservation, there are multiple models to bring affirmative action. It's just not caste community alone. That is important. And if you ask me whether that has to prevail until the social capital is built for a certain set of caste and community, reservation has to be done. Predicate offense is usually an offense already existing. Then, accordingly, uh, uh, the PMLA will come into investigation, enforcement directly. The, the PMLA scheduled offense is listed, Part A of the Prevention Money Laundering Act. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, see, it's a crime that is included. Why AA should be included? That is, the, how they carried out a crime is what you are investigating. The crime can be converted in a traditional method or they can commit through a cyber method. That's different. But crime is committed or not is the question that the law is trying to answer. I think we have some more questions to take up. Yeah. Some more questions? No questions? Yeah. Can you be louder? Threat of violence, okay. See, in threat of violence, you see the violence uh, up front. Intimidation, you actually try to intimidate and it result is violence. Do you understand? Okay. You you give you would give a threat in the name of violence only. But there you intimidate, but result becomes violence. It could have become any other crime also. You understood. So that's a differentiation. That is from the common man understanding. But the definition is provided within the act only. You can go through if you want in section two of the Bharati Nyaya Sanita 2023. Yeah. So, yeah, that is a, that, sir, that's based on the information that the police receives. Informant goes and informs to determine whether it is a uh, accident or a murder. It is the power of the police to decide based on the investigation, inquiry. So that's a police rule. What basis the court has the power to give? See, with respect to judiciary, you cannot ask what basis. Judiciary works independent. In that offense, judiciary decided to give bail, they gave bail. That's all. So there is no question for bail. There is no law. Even under, I was expecting in the new law, there should be a separate sections for bail as a separate chapter or there should be a new law for the bail even supreme court has highlighted about it there should be a new law for the bail but for bail is a discretion of the court court should believe whether they can give bail or not so ultimately judiciary is powerful compared to other two organs of the uh, constitution you have to understand this and it is independent it is not dependent on uh, legislative as of now the new law has got legislated it is not ultimate in the country. It tasks to come to the doorsteps of the court. There we will take care from the perspective of uh, arguing and filing writ petition. And anybody in this country can file a writ petition. Anybody can file a writ petition to question on a law. So whether that person has an access is the question. <laughs> so it to, now as of now, legislative has enacted these three laws. It has to come into the hands of the executive. They have to implement this law. There will be some procedural issues. That will come to the court. Then questioning of law through writ petition in the high court, that is constitutional court and the Supreme Court, that has to come. So this law has to go through a lot of transformation. As of now, it just came. It has come. That's all. So it is not ultimate. There's going to be a lot of changes that's going to happen in this law. I can innovate multiple issues within the same law from the perspective of Article 21 only. <laughs> Take, for example, we spoke about handcuffing. So I told it will go through the Supreme Court rounds of litigation again, one more time. Yeah. Any more questions? A BNS affects the president. Uh, because already there are existing rules, uh, existing laws, which it, it got replaced with a new law. 
but even supreme court judgments which got nullified will not work anymore because a new law got enacted they have nullified many of the supreme court judgment but now if you are finding it it's again affecting article of the constitution you have to go through the rounds of uh, litigation yeah mob lynching i told you, you know four or five people coming together and hitting because if they belong to particular race caste community then that is classified as mob lynching yeah yeah under the new law answer is yes no it will come under even more uh, the it is under organized crime so organized crime is what they are investigating so what law will apply what uh, sections will apply the police will decide so police is into the investigation so ultimately which section to come you cannot decide or any lawyer cannot decide in a police station police uh, department decides so they take legal opinion from the legal preliminaries experts and file a case and then investigate the matter so any crime for that matter you cannot impose a section number it is the role of the police department law enforcement agency to check section 111 of the bns it has to be brought in for the organized crime they can do it if they are bringing it for some other mob lynching answer is yes which but it's a heinous crime so it will definitely come under organized crime why did maharashtra bring mcoc act because they wanted to control organized crime you go and see old films any dawn will come only from mumbai yes or no they'll zoom to that uh, boat uh, from there it will they will zoom to the that sound will come boat sound will come then they'll show the marine drive and then show him in some uh, dark place this was a trend of the movie itself yes or no so that is in all is the, what they are showing were organized crime those organized crime were addressed in maharashtra through mcoc act in 1999 so now uh, thankful to the present uh, law it is now recognized under article uh, uh, section 111 it is applicable to all those states where mcoc is not there so it is a blessing in disguise but uh, even more advanced laws or uh, enhanced laws can be brought in even in tamil nadu or karnataka to stop uh, crimes of the kind what you say so yeah oh it's a good question so you bring a law in the state center goes and amends in the union government that is central law what they bought that's what you are trying to say some center cannot amend the state law center can amend the law which is there in the concurrent list that's what i am telling you know the center brings a law state brings its own own set of laws which is repugnant to the center then it goes to the president gets an assent and becomes a law again center cannot go and affect it because independently you have gone through the it is not going to the assent of the governor understand with respect to article 254 uh, clause 2 of the constitution of india it goes to the president the law the article does not say governor generally state laws whom, whom does it go governor it goes to the governor governor will uh, will not be passing will not be giving assent yes or no or he may give depending upon the situation of the uh, bill or whatever uh, is his decision but in this article 254 it clearly mandates that the there is a repugnancy of the union uh, government uh, brought law and the state government and it is lying in the concurrent list if it is the union list or state list you have no choice because state list is exclusive union list is exclusive state cannot uh, bring law in the under the state law union cannot bring law but in concurrent list both can bring law if both can bring law then there is a repugnancy uniformly they can bring one law but if it is not in repugnancy no problem if it is repugnant then you have to go to the president get the assent and come back to make it a law in the state assent is not given then the union uh, law will prevail until the time the assent is given it's a simple math simple uh, formula it should be given and even the state cannot dilute the union law and then bring it so we have to wait and watch which are the states for example own tamil nadu itself you have uh, tamil nadu uh, protection of interest of depositors act which was there from 1998 for economic offenses like chit fund scams and all those things indian government in the year 2019 uh, 
they brought a law called banning deposit schemes buds act 2019 this buds act comes under concurrent list this bud act buds act come under the concurrent list now buds act is there tant bid act is there which act will prevail what should act uh, tant bid is already there in tamil nadu now tamil nadu has legislated tamil nadu buds act and it got assent of the president to the extent of repugnancy what they did they took the extracts of the tant bid act in brought it under the tamil nadu buds act tant bid act is also there so but still but tamil nadu buds act answers different question so both laws is existing and uh, buds act uh, got implemented in tamil nadu i'm giving an example what is the recent uh, thing that has happened okay thank you so much and i am sure i'm thankful to shankar is academy oh, yes yeah Correct. So, how, uh, the... so today I was only dealing with Bharati Nyaya Sanita to an extent, and then in depth about the introduction to the what I have taught is not the full uh, the entire law. I just gave the introduction that itself took two days, right? There is a third element called Bharati Sakshya Adhiniyam, uh, where you have uh, the Indian Evidence uh, Evidence Act. Under that, now forensic and medical examination has become an important uh, aspect of uh, evidence gatheration. gather gathering the please understand whether it is indian evidence act 1872 or bharatiya sakshya uh, adhiniyam 2023 the principles of evidence has not changed principles evolving the evidence of, has not changed primary evidence secondary evidence circumstantial evidence what is there in law is principles of law that will remain intact forever for 1500 years also probably the evidence from ai probably the evidence from cyber uh, the, the traditional methods will anyway prevail the additional methods are incorporated to bring under the principles of law that's what is the change that has happened so indian evidence act it is new indian evidence act even uh, bharati nyaya act there is much more changes which we need to track so i think only when you attend those kind of uh, lectures then you will understand and appreciate about what has happened in the evidence act but one clear change in the new bharatiya sakshya adhiniyam 2023 is forensic and medical examination has become a mandate in most of the evidences to audio visual recording has become an evidence immediately you will ask me about the privacy are we have we evolved about the privacy now recently madras high court has come out with the judgment divisional bench judgment where they said the minor name even should not be mentioned in the written statement minor uh, girl's name should not be mentioned so that's a kind of a sensitivity judiciary shows on uh, important laws of this country so considering it audio visual if you are going to make a recording how confidential it will be how they are going to protect the data yesterday's event you know about microsoft so we are relying on technology how technology is going to address this what is privacy what is not privacy these are all evolving disputes and questions before the uh, system and i am sure that uh, we have to live with it we have to keep evolving in the days to come yeah, and ai coming in generative ai coming in so even more challenge so we have to equip the entire system the new act has come in the last two days we are discussing for hours together in the entire country uh, people from the judiciary uh, law enforcement agency they are all in discussion about it we still we have not ourselves understood think about the village people tahsildar vao constable how when are we going to empower them it's a long journey of any change to be brought in we have challenges that is where opportunity lies for the educated like you without challenges the challenges what opportunity you will have but every time when you think you are thinking for a problem please understand so as an administrator or a part of the executive or whether you are a police official or a vao or whatever role in the government you have lot of things to do lot of things to do so accordingly we have to just equip the system in the days to come so bringing a law is fine but how are we going to implement it is the next question definitely but this is the need of the hour yeah yeah mob lynching so as of now the act and the section doesn't exclude minors 
so it talks about persons in persons mind is included so whether you will be included or excluded is again a question of law but uh, by going through the provision of uh, section uh, 103 i suppose which i read so accordingly if you see there is no exception to the minor so it clearly covers all persons who are involved three or more persons two or more persons who are involved in the uh, concept yeah thank you so much and uh, i am thankful to shankar ias academy i am thankful to vaishnavi ma'am for giving this opportunity to empower all of you i really had a good time and a good crowd i am very sure that uh, this law is more important for all you people more than the any other stakeholder because you are aspirant and you need to know and as a citizen of this country also you must know this system in place and i try to provide the highlights of it but there are many more uh, discussion which is required for this uh, kind of uh, transformation and uh, i'm sure this would have been helpful to all of you thank you so much